Welcome to Camera Ready and Able, the podcast that explores the intersection of media change and personal growth. I'm your host, Barbara Barna Abel, and my calling is to help you tap into your superpowers, hone your message, and make an impact on the world. Today's episode is brought to you by the phrase, it's all about storytelling. Storytelling is, of course, the interactive art of using words, visuals, and actions to reveal the elements of a story while engaging the listener or viewer's imagination. Storytelling brings facts to life, makes the abstract feel concrete, and is one of the most important ways we as humans convey the meaning of our existence. Yep, we're going deep. My guest for this episode, Bill Brand, is a storyteller par excellence, and his far-ranging career is proof. From news director at WPRI in Providence, Rhode Island, to CEO today of fashion retailer Route 21, Bill has made stops along the way at VH1, Lifetime, HSN, and Carnival Cruise Lines. When I asked Bill to be on the podcast, I wanted him to talk about leadership because he's seriously the best boss ever. But he insisted it's really all about storytelling. So be still my heart. Welcome, Bill Brand. Hey there. Thank you for being here. Hey there. So good to see you. Thanks for having me. It's fabulous to see you. For everyone listening, we actually have visuals as we record. So, Bill, I have to ask, can't resist, what's your story? What's my story? Wow. (laughs) How much time do we have? All the time you need. You know, storytelling, as you know, has really been what I've built my whole career on. But the interesting thing, I think, about career and about life is it's just not linear. But that common thread might be how I use stories to bring businesses along the journey and people along. And so to your point earlier, I did start in local news. And, you know, I was never the big J journalist, but I really appreciated uh, civic pride and bringing communities together, which was something that I had learned Well, my first job in Columbus, Ohio, when I wasn't the guy that was all about the fires and the horrible crime, but it was like this idea that you could do more by bringing a community together. And so storytelling allows you to do that. So I look at two different aspects of my career. I look at storytelling, and then I look at passionate fan bases. And those passionate fan bases in local news certainly could have been Columbus or Pittsburgh or Los Angeles or Rhode Island. But then when we were together at VH1, we learned about the power of passionate fan bases around music and bringing those stories to life or lifetime television for women. You know who you're talking to. And that led me to this world of retail, which, you know, when I first got that call, which we can talk about, I'm like, no, 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 no. I live in Los Angeles. I, you know, I'm in Hollywood. I'm, I, I'm a, you know, I tell stories and bring, you know. And they're like, no, you got to listen more. And then I, I started to understand that retail, good retail is all about a story, but a good retailer is truly another media network because we bring eyeballs together. We bring stories to life and we create engagement. And that's what makes us successful in retail. Okay. Three minutes and 25 seconds in, Bill Brand, you just delivered the most amazing masterclass and distilled down for everyone listening, the power of storytelling and also the power of contemporary marketing and what everyone needs to do, whether you're an individual, you know, or a larger organization or brand. That was amazing. Thank you. Well, I think what the key is, and I think, you know, I've, I've learned it along the way when I talk about these fan bases, but it's really about who's the end user. Who's the customer? Who's the viewer? And then are we treating them like the hero that they should be? And along the way, we've all worked for different people who think they're the hero, that are our boss maybe, or (laughs) it's the brand is the hero. Or, you know, in my case in retail, it's this new pair of jeans is the hero. And I like to take it back and say, no, the hero is the customer. And if we get that piece right, they're going to love our jeans. They're going to love our brand. And they're going to become raving fans. We just have to remember that the customer or the viewer, if you're in the media side, is truly the hero. Oh, I couldn't agree more. And I'm just, you know, in a really simplified version of that, Bill. So when I'm talking about on the media coaching or media training side is really understanding to your point exactly who am I speaking to, but not even like in the sort of broad demographic speak. I mean, I identify that person in my mind's eye. Like I know who it is, their name, what they're doing. I'm respectful of their time that, that they stop to listen to what I have to say. And one of my insider tips I give to people all the time that I actually learned from voice artists was I print photos of my uh-huh. people and I, so that I'm really starting to engage with them. What a great device. 
like to yeah. talk to you. And so it's the same thing. Like I have your website open. And by the way, there's this really adorable pair of blue wide leg cargo pants that I'm kind of in love with. <laughs> I'm completely out of the Rue 21 demo, but we'll circle back to that. But the same thing is like you, it's, it's so clear from how you talk to your customer, even, you know, via your website and through socials, that it's like you're talking to not at which is yeah. such an essential part of storytelling. And you have to learn. You have to learn that, right? I mean, that doesn't come naturally. Well, how do you learn that? What are the, what are right. the right questions that you ask? I think you surround yourself with really good people who understand the customer, who understand kind of what's going on, whether it's you know, being current or being, being relevant. It's sometimes I'll see our emails and I'll say, or our, you know, our texts, and it'll be like these acronyms. And I'm like, okay, who talks like that? Well, our audience, our customers do, our customers, you know, so now I'll sprinkle IRL as part of my regular <laughs> conversation and try to look a little younger than I am, but, you know, or you are as opposed to spelling it out. But those are the types of things where, you know, you build that authenticity and you do it sometimes through words, sometimes through images, sometimes through, you know, how you create and produce content. Wait, I want to acknowledge this. I saw something on your website I've never seen somewhere else. Granted, I'm not in the demo. Uh -huh. But talk about, we hear you and we see you. You have a category called festival. Yeah. So our, you know, our customer coming out of COVID, we hope, in this kind of this post-pandemic world, they want to go back to life. And, you know, that idea of gathering and being social, which is something that has actually sustained our brand, which we can talk about during the pandemic. The customer that we serve, a multicultural 15 to 25 year old, they were craving that physical interaction. It's why we're one of the top performing mall stores is because our customers, just like us, the parents drop them off at the mall or they go to the mall themselves and they hang out for the day and they hang out in our community at Route 21. And they liked that as, you know, even, you know, during the pandemic. And now as we think about what do they want to do in real life? So our spring campaign is kind of around staycation and the idea of expressing yourself wherever you are. But that also could mean a concert. It can be going back to a festival. And sometimes we just all kind of want to close our eyes and go there. And that's really the um, one of our big fashion stories for spring is around festivals. But just like that, like if you were, no matter who's listening in your audience, they would interpret festivals. What would they do with that? So if they're producing content for a morning show, they know what they need to do about that, right? Or if they're at a VH1 the way that we used to be, they could have created a whole weekend around that. Those are the same stories that we interpret through fashion. What I've learned and have done a little bit of research since I've been here in the year and a half is to really what is that multicultural 15 to 25 year old looking for? Our African-American audience is looking to express themselves and our Hispanic audience is looking to belong. And when we get it right, they can both identify and, ex and express and belong in that same environment. And that's really what we're doing at Route 21 that I don't think anyone else is focused on. That is so powerful. So you're focused on expressing and belonging and my feeling welcome in these spaces is what leads me to the sale. I'm not yeah. leading with the sell. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's creating a customer culture. Just like we, you know, our goal, how do we get as many people as possible? We have to build traffic. When, we were, when I was in the TV world, it was all about you know, ratings, right? That was all traffic coming in. Then how long could you keep them engaged? Could you get them through a commercial break? and keep them for an extra few minutes. At the store, it's the same thing. How can I get them engaged? Keep them there longer. And the longer they're there, the more likely they're going to be adding to their basket. The more mm -hmm. likely they're going to be spending time in our community and connecting with our, our sales team, You know, trying on product, testing a fragrance. The more of those interactions, the longer that engagement lasts, the more likely I'm going to convert them into a sale. I want to talk here something about the word emotion and how we connect emotionally, because as you're talking, I'm, I'm reminded of a couple of things. One, how many people will tell younger people starting out along the way, you know, if you start a news, you can't get out of news, which I totally don't agree with. And you could start wherever you are and, and, and move along because to your point, it's all about storytelling. Because besides you, the other amazing person who started news and built an empire is Andy Cohen. And the thing is that you two have in common is understanding news is such a great place to learn the power of story because we think it's about the news, right? I mean, it is, but it's always about connecting emotionally. And I think that that's what you're really talking about here is also honoring and connecting emotionally, whether it's your viewer, your customer, however we define that person. Yeah. Emotions play, play a real role in terms of what is, how does that story express to the brand, but certainly how you produce a story how you tell a story, the formulas that you create. I remember when I was in news and there was a consultant that came through and he in a diagram on the screen, 
And it was this idea of starting, it was kind of like an hourglass, or, you know, or inside out hourglass, starting tight. Tell me the emotion of this person that's going through whatever the story is about. Broaden it to make everyone in the audience interested and connect, and then bring it back at the end to that same person that you started with. It's a traditional beginning, middle, end. But it gives you that ability to tell stories. And I remember taking that, whether it was our before they were rock stars or where are they now, you start to think about even when um, Jeff Gaspin and Gay Rosenthal and George Mall, when they did Behind the Music, think about that. How was that formula of Behind the Music where they started small and, you know, that artist who you connect with and then the turmoil and the emotions that they went through and then that empowerment or that redeeming end, right? very similar to how we all tell stories, how we connect with each other as human beings. What I didn't know until the last 15 years of my career is that's what retail is about too. I know. So talk to me about, so HSN is your first foray into retail, correct? Yeah. Right. Okay. So as a woman, I know that things are all about like a color story and a lipstick story. And all these, like, I grew up with these things. You may not have grown up with this sort of language around. So you get thrown into storytelling. How, what was it like for you? Like, do you remember it's like it's a Wednesday, I get thrown in the deep end? Or it's like, <laughs> how did you connect those dots? You know, I, I, sometimes you get lucky, right? When you make that left turn and everyone's like, what the hell are you doing? You're leaving Los Angeles to move to St. Petersburg, Florida. And I, like, to me, geography never really played a role in my decisions of where I wanted my career to go. But it was a risk. But there was a a woman had just started to um, as the CEO of HSN at the time. Her name's Mindy Grossman. And I get the recruiter call and they said, you know, HSN. And I'm like, what's happened to my career? Like (laughs) my condo overlooks the Pacific Ocean in Santa Monica, California. Like I'm in Los Angeles, Hollywood and home shopping network, like infomercial. And they said, "No, no, no, we have a new CEO. Her name is Mindy. And I'm like, "Okay, tell me about Mindy. And they would say, Nike, Ralph Lauren, Tommy Hilfiger. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So she's taking a bet on this. And then at the time, you know, still having that mindset of a little bit of being arrogant and that's below me. It was also owned by Barry Diller at the time, an IAC out of New York. And so in putting these together, Mindy said, you don't know what I know and I don't know what you know. Let's do this. Let's make this happen. And I took a risk and a bet on Mindy, and it certainly has paid off for me in so many ways, professionally and personally. But it was this idea that if you can go to HSN, the IAC people in New York said, if you can help make HSN work, we'll get you a job at IAC up here in New York. (laughs) And I'm like, okay. And then you get to Florida and you get the call. Mindy called me and she said, Bill, I just heard from Barry, we're going public. We're being spun off. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm supposed to go up there with them. I'm not supposed to stay here. And then it, 10 years later, we took the, from taking the company public in 08 to selling the company at the beginning of 18, it was this amazing journey of learning retail. But the, I don't know if I've even answered your question, but that throwing in the deep end, the line that Mindy said that convinced me, and she said, Bill, we have Wolfgang Puck. Why don't we look like the Food Network? Wow. And that was the line. And then I started to connect it to, at that time, the home shows that we were doing, like at Lifetime or HG, and the personalities. And then, you know, you start to, to your point, that lipstick has a story, that color story. Fragrance has a story, the emotion of fragrance, celebrity bringing it to life, whether it was J-Lo or, you know, or Gwen Stefani, you know, you start to, we can do that, Mary J. Blige. So they you know, as you start to dive in and pull it back, what's the story? What inspired them to create that? And when you bring that together, that's what connects with our customer, who's that passionate fan of HSN, who loved the convenience of it, would shop online and watch, you know, on TV at the same time, because they just loved the experience of being, you know, engaged through that. And so from that, it was the introduction of Hollywood and stories and movie studios and all of the things that you and I know that we could introduce to the world of HSN. And so Minnie and I were like, in a, this was like our own playground, our own little sandbox and really taking early bets and taking some risk and doing super cool things that I think transformed the industry. We went to about 60% of our business became digital. We were a top five mobile retailer because it was also an investment in technology. It was adapting to the way that women were shopping and how could we stay a part of that? The key as you think about this, and then I will be quiet, I promise, it's content, and community. So my former life was all about content and community, but what I learned at HSN and what I love about retail 
is the outcome is commerce. Content plus community equals commerce. So when you start to put that equation together and, and how do you, and I, I say this about every brand or every business that I, that I talk to other executives is what's the story? What's the content? Because if that's your afterthought, you're going to miss the boat. You're going to miss all of the beauty of storytelling, all of the beauty of building connection, all of the beauty of emotion. If you think the content is the output, the input is the content in the story. And what's that vision that you want for that journey of your customer? And so changing that on its head is really something that I've done here. And I've done prior, obviously, at HSN and Carnival Corporation. Wow, wow. Okay, so much there. Sorry. I hope I, no, no. Oh, no, you I'm don't so, apologize. I'm, I'm meant, trying to figure out content plus community. Yeah, equals so community. good. I, I say on so many episodes, the thing I love about a podcast, you can hit pause and go rewind so you can take Thank notes you. and listen to that over again. That was amazing. I was so glad you brought up community because that's what I was thinking. Because one of the things I love about working and training people in the home shopping space, it taught me so much about that because part of that customer experience is, is a lot of people whether it's not only watching, but all through social media. Anyway, it's a huge community and it's like, and people watch and they feel seen and heard. And it's such like a sharing back and forth, which I love, but this whole thing about content plus community equals commerce. Amazing. So now I want to stop and ask you a question. That was really powerful. There's a question, I promise. But that was really powerful when you said about leading with the story. So you, don't name names, but can you give an example of like when you've seen people making the mistake the other way where they're not understanding to lead with story? Because I really want to drive this home to the listener. This is so powerful for us as individuals, as brands. And then, and then if we work with larger groups, this is huge. Yeah, I think the next time anyone in your audience goes to a mall, the next time that they go to a grocery store, the next time that they do anything that involves commerce. Um, what's that experience? What, what, what do you walk into? So I'm here in Pennsylvania where um, Route 21 is based outside of Pittsburgh. And I got to the hotel last night and I usually check in and then I go to the grocery store and I stock up on my essentials. So I try to lead a healthy life during the week while, while I'm here. And I went to a grocery store last night and it was kind of lame. It just, it wasn't good. And it, it had all the commodities, you know, it had all the eggs, it had all the yogurt, but it was just not, there was something off. It just didn't connect. And, and I thought, you know what, I should have driven all the way to that other store in Wexford where I knew that they, you walk in and they have a Starbucks there and they have chairs. They have a wine store over here and they're doing samples. They have the prepared food over here. Yeah, your eggs and your yogurt and your milk are still there, but you're missing the experience. And so one of the things that when you think about a mall store, if you just walk in and you're just buying a sweatshirt or a t-shirt, yeah, you can do that. But what I want at Route 21 is that you come into an environment and an experience that speaks to you. So the music is playing, the sales team is welcoming you, they're asking you what's going on and you know how can we help you and create this experience. And so it doesn't have to be named names because it's personal. Sometimes a bad grocery store might speak to someone and they might actually like it. Yeah, that takes me back in time. But what I expect, especially in suburbs of Pittsburgh, as I'm expecting, you know, a full on cool experience. And so I relate that. And I think sometimes it's on location and sometimes it's, you know, where do you make a, where do you make that connection that works and that means something to you? And I think it's personal. But certainly, uh, you know, there are brands out there that just are stuck in the past. And then you look at their earnings and you, you know, there's no surprise, right? Not, there's just nothing special about it. And so what I want to do is create things that are special for our customers. Mm -hmm. This is what I want to circle back to because one, you're reminding us that we have choice and that we want to feel valued. And so when we go in and we have a negative experience, it was um, someone forgot that I had a choice, right? Yeah, and you won't go back and you make a decision in the future. Right, but, but, part, but the mistake was they forgot to value me as a customer. So then this goes back to, I really wanted to get to the point of that it's all about storytelling is the idea that experience connects to story. And this becomes too important for individuals when you think about even how are you showing up on social media and valuing your friends or your community, whoever shows up for you right? That it's still, it comes down to like micro and macro. But what I was trying to get- Also this idea between what's real, because we can mm. all show up 
that doesn't mean that we're in the community yet. It doesn't mean that we have a relationship yet. It just means that we showed up. There's still work to do to connect the dots. Because what we're all looking for is to go from transactional to relationship. I'd love for you to show up once, but even better if you love me enough that you're going to come again and again, and we become a destination. That's what we all want. So we can say that we're a community, but that has to lead to connection and relationship to make it enduring. And that's really the focus that you know I, I, I try to play. We started by talking about how important it is to understand who your client or customer is, so you're talking to them. Can we talk also about how important it is to understand who you are in order to tell your story? Yeah, I think it's an interesting question. So to me, I, I start with values. And it's one of the things that one of the first big projects that I did here at Rue 21 was identify the values for our company. And I would tell you that the values probably don't differ much of who you are versus where you want to work and where you feel comfortable and so you do the work. In this case, we did a survey of our employees. We did our senior leadership team. And then we distilled that and came up with our values because that is what you lead with. That's who you are. And so my values, you know, around integrity of always doing the right thing, of collaborating and bringing people along. I know I'm not the smartest. I know I'm not the brightest. But I know that I have a skill to surround myself with really good, decent people. And together, we can accomplish some pretty cool things. So collaboration. The other value that is on our walls here at Route 21 that I bring is curiosity. And so as we're talking about you know, storytelling being consistent, but as we talk about from local news to television, cable pro programming to retail, any success that happens there is because I'm open, that I'm curious, that unlike today, I actually listen more than I talk. And I ask questions. So you can only imagine I'm in, you know, I was just in New York this week with investors, meeting with investors. You're not, you don't have all of the answers. Sometimes I've got to ask them more questions, right? That my CFO, who's like my partner here, our chief financial officer, I'm no financial gymnast, but she's pretty darn good. And she's got my back and she protects this business. And my questions to her are going to be different than the questions to our chief merchandising officer which probably are going to be, you know, this is the story of our business and the numbers and how they connect and what we have to do to achieve the results that we've signed up for. And then it has to connect to the product. So mm -hmm. we have to, we have to, but I have to ask different questions to different constituents. So that's where the curiosity plays. So collaboration, curiosity, integrity. And then for me, long before being here, it's this idea of inclusivity. It's this idea of respecting people from different backgrounds and bringing them together. And that's how I think you build great teams. And that's how we help each other. And because I think as a leader, my job is to bring people forward, to just put that hand in the back and pull them up with me. Because every step of the way, someone did that for me. And it's my responsibility at this point in my life to be able to make sure that I'm, that I'm always doing that for others. Well, I'm here to testify on behalf, because I can't speak for your employees now, but I can um, project because you created an amazing work community at VH1 back in the day. And um, so many of us are still very dear friends and in touch. And it's been... 20 six something years since <laughs> I, you know what I mean? No, I it's like these, some of my best friends, you know, is, and you know, they're all first names for both of us, whether it's Jeff or Shelly, Elise and Chuck and Brad. And, you know, you kind of go through the list of all the people that we had there. And, you know, there's certainly, I think in each stages of our career, we probably have those names of people. And I, I think it probably speaks to who we are when you know that um, they're still in your life, 25 and 26 years later, and you're still collecting new people as well. And I think it's pretty important, but it is pretty special. It is really special. And it's, of course, you're really humble um, because it was, you were, you know, you were leading us and really creating that and living your values, which I'm so glad that you touched on along with curiosity and collaboration because the community is in front. It's also behind. It really matters. But also the notion of living with values which I don't feel gets discussed enough, um, but we talk about on the podcast because 
I think it's really important um, to know your own values to figure out where you're going to thrive, which you mentioned earlier, and to use that as part of your criteria and moving forward. Because I think many of us, it's easy to get wowed by logos or brand names or all sorts of ideas like that, you know, or just even the paycheck and realizing, but am I going to thrive there? Is, are these my people? Yeah. Is that a place that I can identify with? And I think those are some of the questions that I think if you start asking and and sometimes that's that emotion of what you feel when you're interviewing, because if it's just a transaction that I'm filling in a slot and that's, you know, but no, what really, what's the potential? Do I really see myself there? And I can tell you that two years ago, when I first was approached on this job here at, at Route 21, my first answer was no. Like <laughs> I've not run a mall-based retailer, and you know, and and but then as I started to do the the work, I'm like, wait, they're not distressed. They're in financially, they're a healthy business. So box check, they have a great CFO, and oh, I went to the mall and I looked at it. And I'm like, they, they they actually have a lot of people here. Then I'm at the store, you know, and you realize, oh, wait, I can do something with this. We can build the brand. We can tell the stories. We can bring it to life in a different way. You can make impact. And when you feel like you can make impact somewhere, then you know what you're doing, right? Then you can build that momentum because our careers are about momentum. And sometimes we all feel stuck and we need that reset. We need that energy forward. And sometimes you have to do it in the same place that you're at. And someplace you might have to start over. But a brand sometimes needs momentum. And that's when, hey, are our values aligned? Are all of the way, is our team focused on that same thing? Are we delivering our expectations together? As you start to put that together, it's like you can jumpstart it regardless of the level that you are in the organization. You can make impact. And I think that is critical. I love the idea that we could also either like judge the story, change the story. We all need to like adapt, you know, revisit the story. I mean, I can stretch that metaphor all day. Impact, obviously, it's in it's it's in the intro to my it's yeah. it's the raison d'etre of the the podcast. So I couldn't agree with you more. Look, and it also isn't smooth. Look, look, we've all had bumps. I don't think there's very many jobs that I left on my own. You know, there was always a nudge or a push or kind of a wink to say, "Hey, your future ain't great here, and it's probably time or time to go." And, well, I'm just and- laughing, Bill, because sometimes it was like a drop kick. Yeah. And just like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> but that's. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I did feel the doorknob on my way out. Thank you Ouch. so much. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, in, you know, so, you know, it's easy for you and I to share and tell a story and it all feels so smooth and wow, they're so blessed. They've gone from what? No. There have been those moments of reset where you have to really question in between and you have to be open. And I think, you know, knowing that it's going to be fine. It's probably going to be better than you can imagine at the time. And, you know, we can always say, oh, things happen for a reason. Well, sometimes they just happen. And then you got to deal with it and you got to pick it up and you got to be true to yourself and discover. And that's where that curiosity comes in. So being open to moving to St. Petersburg, Florida in 2006 was kind of a big step. And it led to You know, even this job that I'm in, I can't tell you one of the things that was most appealing to the board and to the recruiter at the time is like, yeah, Pittsburgh didn't scare me. Like, wait, I like the job. I want to make an impact with the people, with the brand. I want to build a long-term sustainable business here. Pittsburgh, it's a 45-minute flight to Newark. It's two hours to Florida. It's three hours, you know, five hours to Los Angeles. But there were so many people that stopped down and say, from a geography standpoint, that's not for me. And I think my always being open and being willing to consider opportunities that are kind of a little bit out there helps me. And I think my advice for others is to be a little bit more open. And in this COVID world, you know, I didn't have to move to Pittsburgh, people. I'm I'm here several times a month. Pittsburgh's a great city. I love Pittsburgh. First of all, you've got, it's a great hockey town, great art museum, incredible food. Yeah. I had, I was drinks at the bar last night at the hotel I'm staying in the former defensive player for the Penguins. I should get a name for you, but he was a nice guy. But, (laughs) but, you know, so I think that idea that, you know, there's speed bumps along the way, but there's this openness to make an impact. But the other word that I think that we should also talk about is purpose. Mm -hmm. Go for it. One of the things that I learned (laughs) along the way, and, you know, I think when we were together at VH1, remember they did Save the Music? Of course. And we produced those documentaries of, you know, the kids and the programs about the, you know, the arts not being funded. And, you know, it kind of sparked some, we did the stories on it and we helped hopefully raise funds and awareness to um, music in the schools and what it does for kids and great, um, their grades and everything. 
But that kind of carried forward to even when I was at Lifetime and um, for television for women, and we did our women rock and our breast cancer. But at HSN, there wasn't a philanthropy program. There wasn't a give back component. So I created HSN Cares that raised tens of millions of dollars for women and children and families in need. And you could be really proud of that. But what I was also able to do is you end up meeting people that you wouldn't have in my narrow career or in my narrow job. And being able to broaden it, you end up networking with people that would never have come into your life. And that led me to my, uh, I'm on the board of Habitat for Humanity International, where we're, you know, we have building homes across the US and then 70 countries. And I'm, I'm, I've been on for six years now, but I've met people, there's no one else like me on that. There's no one else that comes from our backgrounds of TV or in retail. These are, you know, former housing you know, secretaries for <laughs> Bill Clinton. You know, Henry Cisnero used to be on the board and you end up becoming, you, you build these relationships with people and you just never know where it leads. And that openness of learning is part of that curiosity, but at the same time, you're giving back and you're adding purpose. And I think that to me is something that's important. And I'll wrap by telling you, bringing it full circle, here at Rue 21 on Saturday, we launched a Stand With Ukraine t-shirt. And our team was like, how can we help? What can we do? And that's really what we did. And so we created this t-shirt, 100% of the proceeds are gonna go to save the children, but it speaks to our values. But for me, it's that purpose to say that we can do more, that we can help other people. And that truly comes back to um, you know, purpose, impact, community. And it's something that, uh, you know, I, I recommend when I mentor students and, and young people in their career to say, where are you giving back? You know, there's not a nonprofit in your community that wouldn't value your skills. You're a content producer. The SPCA could, you could produce videos like crazy this weekend for the SPCA and they would love it. You know, whether it's March of Dimes or Heart, the Heart Association or Habitat, any of them, your kid's school all have ability uh, places where you can connect and give back in your skill set. Not only will you help do something that I think is pretty powerful, but I can also tell you, you're going to learn a lot too. And I think that has been really key to me over the last 15 years. Bill, I also want to acknowledge and really applaud when you talk about launching the t-shirt and raising your know, proceeds for people in Ukraine is that you're doing something essential to storytelling and communication is you're meeting your audience where they are and introducing them to that story and, and connecting in a way that um, in language, they can understand why this matters. And so now you're opening somebody's world into some, some bigger ideas. I thought it was beautiful and powerful when I saw it on your website. Thank really you. impressed. Thanks. It was something that, you know, certainly our company hadn't been able to do before. And so the idea of um, the skills that we have as producers and storytellers is also to move quickly and to be agile. And when you apply that to this world, when the idea came to, let's do this. And then I met with the merchant, um, the, the lead merchant for our guys. And he said, oh, I can do that. And I said, well, can you have the design by the end of the day? And then sure enough, he had the design by the end of the day. And he had a company that could produce it and have it in our warehouses in less than two weeks. Those are the things that, you know what, if you don't ask and if you don't push, it doesn't happen. And I think we all can be um, much more flexible and agile than we think. So we operate with these tight guardrails in our life or in our careers, and we kind of kind of blow those apart sometimes and then start asking questions differently, and you might get a different result. Well, I love it. You're living proof you've done it, right? You had your initial guardrails come up when you get offered these jobs along the way, and your guardrails are like, nope. And then you're like, wait a minute, I'm willing to lower the rail. I also want to just connecting dots for people is, you know, yes, and is the essential premise of comedy improv. And that's what you're all living every day because when we say no, we end the scene. Mm -hmm. If you're in a, if you're Great doing point. comedy with someone and they no, okay, well that scene's over, and so you're constantly living the yes and principle, which I don't know. I just think it's really really important in how you're lifting up everyone around you, not you know your employees, your customers, your vendors. I'm sure, which is fantastic. You know, I, I hope so. I mean, I think, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, look, my job is the CEO. There's a lot more important people at this company that have to work really hard every single day to deliver what we need to do for our customers, right? Whether it's in a distribution center. I mean, this is complicated. This isn't easy. But my job and where I inspire others is a vision, right? And it is that it is through storytelling that that works for me. 
And then as you're creating a culture, you know, it's nice to be happy. And I love that I have all these relationships with people that I've worked with through my career because we, we care about each other. Um, but things always weren't positive and happy. My job is to help solve problems. And that's where the questioning comes in and the curiosity. So I love a happy place, but happy doesn't necessarily mean it's all going to be successful. There's also tension that is okay. And you have to kind of accept that. Because if you're focused and understand what you're solving to together as a team, you can have a really successful business. And that's some of what I have to get comfortable with because I prefer everyone to be happy and smiley and all cheerful. And at some point I accept tension if it's in relation to solving problems and supporting and empowering people. Mm-hmm. Wait, so, okay, full circle. Cause we started, you know, it's like, it's all about storytelling, but it's interesting too, on a sort of tactical level, news director, CEO, both jobs are a lot about solving problems and most jobs and, are and, and raising, right. Lift what floating boats. What, I'm, I'm missing my, my metaphor there, but you know what I mean? But it, it's interesting. And one of the ways, and so much about communication is like, it, so to have a strong team is that we have a cohesive story and everybody knows what that story is, which is why that goes back to, it's really important. I just, when I've worked with clients, a lot of, whether it's individuals or companies, the ones that are the most successful is because they understand who they are and what they're doing, what their mission is, mm-hmm. what their purpose is, what their values are. The ones who struggle, it's because they, they haven't figured those elements out. Yeah. I like to say that, um, you know, the vision, like our vision is affordable fashion, accessible to all. And that is what it's about for us, right? And I think we've all aligned against that. We have great style and fashion. It's out of value, which we're proud of, in an inclusive environment. But that vision is kind of that North Star. The culture is how we do things around here, right? How do we do things around here? We collaborate. We work well together. We, we, we bring you know our best to the table. Not always. I'm sure there's a few people that might be listening that are my colleagues here that say, oh, I wish it was more like that. But <laughs> you get the idea. We all can, I aspire to um, being positive and creating that positive culture, but how we do things around here. And, and, and then what I've also been learning as I've progressed in my career, and as I look at organizations of that kind of that culture, the broken cultures usually don't have great processes. They don't have the playbook. They keep reinventing. They keep, you know, a new leader comes in and wants to restart and change the world. And it always, you know, one person doesn't change this world of ours. We have an ongoing culture and ongoing business. And then you say, where can I make that impact within that? I don't have to change the whole thing. I just want to change a couple pieces here and there to put my fingerprints on it and to make it, you know, help other people do their jobs even better. But that process piece, we have a a woman that I worked with at HSN that works here. Her name is Beth Lee, and she's our chief transformation officer. And the part of that is that, that? but it's about identifying where do we need to invest our time and talent and create new ways of doing business. And that could be the launch of a private label credit card or a CRM platform or a new e-com platform. But it doesn't just go out and buy that. You don't buy those things off the shelf. They have to fit within this organization. And that's where a chief transformation officer comes in because they become the hub that runs process, that creates the playbooks. So the next can keep implementing this successfully. And that's been a a, a good unlock for us as a company. This is incredible. Is there anything that we didn't cover you want to talk about? (laughs) It's amazing. Oh, gosh. No, just spending time with you is great. I love um, all that you're doing. And, you know, I I remember coming out to Brooklyn and to your brownstone years and years ago, 20. How old? How old is your son? 25 and 21. Okay. So 21 years ago, I came out there with a baby gift and you were on maternity leave and just amazing. Look at us now. Look at us now. Well, I finally got some rest. I mean, I finally got some sleep after all those years. So No, but that's amazing. But that's relationships, right? And that's how, you know, you show up for each other. And so, but it's great to see you. It's so good to see you, Bill. Thank you so much. This was fantastic. It was a masterclass with Bill Brand. And thank you for listening to Camera Ready and Able. Please visit ableintermedia.com and download my free ebook, 12 Tips for Success on Camera. And as always, please be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already.